Let's turn our Bibles together to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse number 9. Let's turn our Bibles together, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Second Corinthians chapter number eight, verse number nine. If you have found it, shout word. Yeah. Shout again word. Yeah. Praise the Lord. One, two, three, let's read. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though ye was rich, yet for our sakes ye became poor, that through his poverty might be rich. So from the scripture, we come to the summation of understanding that Jesus was not poor, but Jesus was rich. But for our sake, he was made poor. But so that we can become rich. Praise God. Say rich. rich. Say again, rich. rich. Say I am rich. I am rich. Touch three people and say, I am rich. I am rich. Not spiritually, but physically. Praise the Lord. I'm going to speak shortly, I think for about 15 minutes on kingdom wealth transfer. Kingdom wealth transfer. Touch your neighbor and say no more poverty. No more poverty. Touch the other one and say wealth. wealth. Touch the other one and say I'm rich. I'm rich. Look at the one that looks like a millionaire. Tell them it's your time for a breakthrough. Yeah. We may be seated in our heavenly places. Jesus in Matthew chapter number 5 he begins to give what we call a kingdom constitution and when he gives a kingdom constitution what begins to happen he places an emphasis on the law of priority and when he talks about the law of priority he begins in Matthew chapter 6 verse number 33 he says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you now, if the kingdom of God is the only kingdom, he could not yet say, seek ye first. So in other words, there are other kingdoms, but other kingdoms are a result of you knowing how to align yourself firstly to the kingdom of God. So through study then, I discovered that there are about seven kingdoms that are functional wherever we go or wherever we are. The first one is what we call the sovereign kingdom. The sovereign kingdom is a kingdom where God dwells, where God dwells, resides, where God domiciles and rules the earth and all the planets in the universe. Now the sovereign kingdom therefore is divided, its authority and its dispensations is divided into three. We got the God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Though they are equal in essence and in nature, they are different in assignments. But now the sovereign kingdom is only good to see you Pastor Maduro, put your hands together for her, amen. Come on, Johnny Hayes. Claire, sisters, clap your hands for us. Amen. Now the kingdom of God, the sovereign kingdom is the only kingdom for it to be moved. It moves on the currency of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 1. Now faith is a substance of things what for the evidence of things not yet seen. By it the elders obtain a good report. And the Bible then says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6. For without faith it is impossible to please God. So the the realm where God dwells is a realm that functions by faith. The Bible tells us that if you have faith like of a mustard seed, you shall say to the mountain, be lifted up and be cast off into the sea. Now that scripture is not necessarily uh, referring to a physical mountain, but you must understand that laws in the Bible were given from the top of the mountain. So it says if you understand the ability of faith, you will command certain laws that have been said in your life or in your environment that there are certain things that are not supposed to happen but because you operate by faith you will break the protocol I announce by the spirit of God that there are people that are about to defy the logic in Zimbabwe you will become a millionaire in Matebele and when they are saying there are no jobs there are talking some people here shout sovereign kingdom we have then what we call the angelic kingdom, the angelic kingdom is divided into two, the diabolic and the divine 
and kingdom. So you must understand through Hebrews chapter 1, 14, angels are they not ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. Now you study the word of God, you realize also in the book of Psalm, it says, shall he not give charge to his angels to hold you up, lest you dash your foot against a storm. According to the book of Isaiah and Chronicles, you realize that one angel gave the capacity of killing 185,000 people. Yet the Bible states that every believer has at least one angel around him. The Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 5 that Joshua is seated an army and is faced with Jericho. The first thing that Jehovah tells him, the Bible says he opened up his eyes, he saw a man that he had a sword thrown out ready to fight. He goes to that man and he said to him, are you for us or you are against us? The man said, I'm not for you, neither against you. And here is a commander of the armies of God. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not alone. It doesn't matter how people look at you, just from today, I want you to declare and decree in your spirit that you are not walking alone. I had one testimony, one lady was passing through a park that they had robbed us all around. But that lady, now, when she was passing, she saw that all the robbers were looking at her funny. She could not understand why they were looking at her funny. And this other guy followed her and he said, if it wasn't for this big men that are working with you, today we could have robbed you and raped you. But it was, she was surprised because she looked and she saw that she was alone. But these other people are seeing big men around them. I prophesy by the Spirit of God, when danger is coming your way, may God manifest his angels around you. Listen, I remember one day we, were, we had a problem with our car as we were driving. Uh, it was uh, the, about maybe 11 o'clock uh, in the night. And as we were driving, coming from Country Park from a, a powerful service, my car started having a problem in a place where it's known that robbers are available. And all of a sudden, I saw this guy coming towards me. My wife was pregnant with another girl called Carol from our church. And we were just there, I'm trying to fix the car. Then I discovered that the part that is needed for that car to start was not there. So it was impossible for the car to start. This guy then comes and he says, I have a very similar car, like the one that you have. I said, sir, from my own understanding, the car cannot start with this part, without this part. He said, no, let me fix it for you. He just touched two, three things and closed the bonnet. I said, go start the car. I started the car, the car started. I then said, sir, where are you going so that I can go drop you? He said to me, you don't need to worry. I can know, I can find my way back home. So I drove and <laughs> I drove, ladies and gentlemen, when I turned back, I discovered that man is no longer there. Why? Because I discovered that when angels come, they come as if they are human beings. Hebrews chapter number five said, others entertained angels and they did not know it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into a season where God will give you angelic assistance. They are coming your way and they are coming to assist you. Daniel chapter number 10, the Bible says for Daniel, I have come because of your words. The Bible tells us when Daniel began to pray, began to pray. The Bible says there was angelic activity that started to take place. And the angel Gabriel begins to give his personal testimony. And he said from the first day that you prayed, your prayer was answered and your reply was given. In other words, our God is, does not delay in answering prayers. But the Bible says I was detained by the angel and the prince of Persia. But he says I have come after 21 days. Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon I feel God is going to answer hundreds of thousands of prayers. Am I preaching to some people here? There is an angel being dispatched now. An angel carrying your promotion. Your angel carrying your breakthrough. An angel carrying your husband. An angel carrying your children. An angel carrying your business. Somebody shout, I need an angel. I see him. He's on the way. He's on the way. Before you move out of this service, you shall receive a phone call. That phone call will change your life. Before you move out of this place, a message is coming on your phone. That your promotion that you've been waiting for for the last five years has come. 
Shout, I need an angel. I need an angel. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. I don't want to take a lot of time here. A lot of things to listen. Number three, we have what we call um, uh, the kingdom, the kingdom of men. Now, the kingdom of men, according to Bill Wright and Laura Cunningham, they say that the kingdom of men is seven mind molders. Number one, our minds are molded through religion. Are, more, are, are molded through religion. Number two, they are molded through our families. For example. Uh, I remember uh, uh, I, I grew up seeing my mother because then we were poor. I grew up seeing my, uh, my mother frying eggs with, with butter, margarine. So every time I would see her doing that, uh, when I got married, guess what I used to fry eggs with? Margarine. Not because there was no cooking oil, but because my foundation
here. Now, when you study the scripture, you realize that it's easy. There are two things we can do. There are two things we can do. It's either you can pray for something or you can pay for something. But I then discover that paying for something is easier than praying for something. It can take me maybe about five years praying for a breakthrough of a car. But if God has blessed me with money, I can just walk straight right there and just produce my money and they will ask me, say, which one do you want? Why? Because God has given us the ability to have authority over money. Say money. money. Shout three times money. 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 Now the problem that has happened in the church is that we have preached against but you must understand that the gospel is free, but taking it to the world is expensive. The Bible never said money is the root of all evil. It said the love of money is the root of all evil. In fact, poverty is the root of all evil. Because if you had money, you would not love it. But now you are loving it because you don't have it. Uh, but I'm here to announce and declare that they are and a, 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 a spirit of entrepreneurship here in Zimbabwe. There are people that are about to emerge in the season where people are saying it's dry and hard. Shout money. money. Listen, listen. Now you must understand that whenever there is a dryness in a season, it's for the advantage of the children of God. There is always a global recession that takes place whenever there is about to be a kingdom transfer of wealth. The Bible says
with you. Don't get your passport because you are bound to do shopping in Italy. Am I preaching to some people here? Shout, I need, I want my money.
please. There are too many people here. Number four, number four. Financial dominion is God's agenda for the end time ministry. I feel like I'm going to prophesy. The Spirit of God just told me now. Hallelujah. Now, financial dominion is God's agenda for the end time ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, people that will carry the body of Christ now to the next level are not poor people. Let me say it so that you don't you get angry. If you find yourself I'm preaching like this, you're getting angry. That's your deliverance. Yeah, it's not you getting angry. It's a spirit that does not want you to hold money. Oh my yes, Lord, but why they put my money church? Come to you forget that you're on a Monday to Friday. Let me conclude, let me conclude. Because I want to pray for women here. Because the Lord told me that you are the people that will carry financial end time ministry. Uh, please say, let me end, let me conclude. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, his body was not given to Peter or James. Don't James, John and Peter were anointed. But they didn't have money. It was Joseph of Arabia that carried the body of Jesus. Now look at this. The first one that saw Jesus resurrected was not Peter, James, and John. It was Mary. Read the book of Luke. The Bible said there were three women that were sponsoring the gospel of Jesus. It was Susanna. It was Mary. Who was there? Joanna, I love it. It was Joanna. So can you discover that the first one that laid the body of Jesus was a man that was rich. That that one that went to see Jesus resurrected was a woman that was rich. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not ordinary people. Especially ladies, get ready. You are the last one, you are the first ones to see Jesus resurrected. And it's about to see, to command your finances to be resurrected. Am I prophesying to seven ladies here? Yeah. If you are sitting to a lady, shout, I am a property owner. I am a property owner. Am I talking to some ladies here? Yeah. Say, I am a property owner. I am a property owner. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the good news to them. So Jesus, when he's coming, he does not come to first address sin. Because sin is a result of poverty. If we can deal with poverty, then there will be less sin. People are small houses not because they want, but because they are looking for a blesser that can pay their rent house. Ah. So Jesus came to deal with your economy before he came to deal with your sin and death and demons. But the church, we have focused more on demons and we have left one of the reasons why Jesus came on earth. One of the reasons he came to preach the gospel to the poor. What is the good news to the poor? Wealth and prosperity. What is the good news to the sick? Healing. What is the good news to the people that are about deliverance? So if I come and preach deliverance to you, Yes. <laughs> 
done. I'm done. I don't go, I'm done. Maybe you'll be the first one that I promise you. I'm done. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Yeah. I want my bread. I want, I want it with benefits. I want it say I want my bread. I want, I want it with benefits. I want there are seven major transfers, world transfers in the Bible. The first one we have the major transfer that we see, we see it in Exodus chapter number 3, uh, verse number 20, and also the second one in Job chapter 1, uh, verse, uh, from verse number 1 we read the financial statement of Job, but in chapter 42 of Job we read a different financial statement. In other words, but, uh, yeah, it's good to tell Krimala Oma, and as we do in yesterday, Praise the Lord. Let me just conclude. Let me just conclude. Now you find that in the scripture that every time God will say that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Say it's laid up for me. It's laid out for me. It's laid out for me. Now there are three things that begin to happen every time there's a wealth transfer. Number one, God begins to transfer gifted people around you, skilled people, educated people, relationships of value. I'm not talking about in casa, ya man. I'm talking about relationships that will push you to your next level. I want to pray that before the service is over, whosoever is supposed to be in your life for good reasons may they be in your life. Who is in your life for bad reasons, I give them a 24 hour notice. They are moving out of your life. I lift up a red card like a referee and I say, out of your life. Gifted people are coming your way. Are coming your way. I feel like preaching to a single lady here, but a boss is on the way. Uh, I'm not talking about a Stevie, but a boss is on the way. Is there anybody that is single here that I receive my boss? Number two, what begins to happen? God gives property and land. Say property and land. Not having your own house and your own property is demonic.
we are about to pray. We are about to pray. I'll give you three prayer points, and then I will be in the prophetic ministry. Three prayer points. I don't know if this person is here because the reason why I'm saying that is a person called Noctenda. 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 Is a person called Noctenda? Don't waste time, please. I'm alone. Mm, it's a person that I'm actually seeing in this organization. It's a person that I'm seeing in this organization. I'm seeing Noctenda. I'm seeing a person called Netwin. Netwin. Latrine is not here today. Where is she? Oh, the admin said, oh yeah. Listen, when a prophet is coming in a place, if people were not allowed in Israel to be absent whenever a prophet comes. Am I talking to people here? Yes. Okay, it's fine. Let's lift up hands to you. Please look for a person called Noctem. Look for a person called Noctem. Look for a person called Noctem. I mean, look for a person called Noctem. I don't know if these people are living for a childhood because I'm seeing about twins. On this person called Noctem, I'm seeing twins. Lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. This is a prayer that I want you to make. Lord, say, Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Every curse of poverty in my family, I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. Every curse of poverty in my family, I break it now. Clap your hands and break it. Break it. Am I resting your trust? No. Lift up your hands for the last time. All right, let's let me try to do this. I say the prophet must be in God. I just need it to Something has to change in your life today. Something has to change. My sister, all I need just to do is to set you free and everything in your life will open up. Right? I say to her, go back and come back. Right? Okay, that's it. Now, there's a reason why I said that she must run. Do you understand? I did say that to everybody. Why? Because God is about to give acceleration to everything she's doing. So, in every prophetic instruction that sway the miracle lies, am I talking to people here? So if the prophet says to you in that first Kings, first Kings chapter 17 and 18, tells the woman, give me water. Even if that's the last water, in the instruction, that's where the miracle is. Amen. Lift up your right hand. There are people you have, you have been promised a lot of things, but they don't materialize. Some of you right now should be in the UK according to promises. Some of you should be in England. Some of you should be in the States. Some of you in South Africa, Cape Town. But still, nothing seems to be working. Every promise dies in the air. It doesn't materialize. Why is it there are other people that get promised something? Next week, they are already testifying. What is blocking those promises to come to pass? You teach someone to do a job at work. Guess what? After three months, they are promoted. And they are under them. And they are the one that taught them. What kind of spirit that is keeping you on the same place? Shabbat Gadabra. I want us to pray. Speed. Speed. Even if you arrive in the ark like a tortoise, but you must understand that by the time you arrive, others will have long gone. 
I want us to pray, Lord, give me, grant me speed. I see that speed resting on seven people in this place. Seven people. Lift up your hands. Shabakada. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive speed. I receive divine acceleration. By fire. By fire. By fire. By fire. By fire. Clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands and pray. Hallelujah. Maybe because of our time, I'll prophesy other people on Friday. Amen. Am I wasting time? No. Shall I continue? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. There's nothing as hard for a prophet to move in the prophetic ministry when people are not connected. Do you understand? So why does I'm trying maybe talk to somebody, someone will be walking out of the door. Not that it's lunch hour, so people have to go to work. But when it becomes now a frequent thing, it's dis it, it disturbs the flow of the spirit. Do you understand? Amen. So if you want, to, if, if you feel like you need to leave now, you can leave by release. So that I work with people that are saying, I am here. You don't want to leave. You don't want to leave now. Answer me. Yes or no? Okay. You have decided now. Yeah. Because I, I kept on seeing your hands and I need to leave. I need to leave. I need to leave. So that's why I wanted to release you. But anyway, you can say so that I pray. Okay. Say yes. Amen. God bless you. Lift up your hands. Let's pray. Okay. Can we try maybe to prophesy everyone? Let's see what, how much time we have. Yeah, okay. Alright. I'll start from this session. Move to this session. Finish. All of us. And, and I'll give you the opportunity to ask questions quick and fast. So I'll give everybody here a minute as I'll be coming to prophesy. All right? Okay. If there's a special case, I'll put you aside because some of the things they need special attention. They need special lift up hands. Say Lord. Lord. Shall I get Lord? Lord. Whatever witchcraft is done to my finances, is done to my finances. Let, it be fire. let 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 it be fire.
下午呢？我下午。下午。下午。下午。下午。下午。下午。下午。谢谢你们，谢谢，有好事。I see you crying. For the past months, you are always crying. If you sit down, if you think of your husband, you cry. Because in the realm of the spirit, when others were celebrating, I saw an hour of flying from the 23rd of December coming to the 25th, killed your husband. I saw your husband dying on the 25th of December. It's true. Who did you come with here? Did you come alone? Came with my friend. Friend, where are you? Come, come stay with your friend. Now you are afraid. That how will you manage life? Things are hard for you. Let me tell you, God is the husband to the widow. that way we Lord that are about to be released for you. Is it true? So what is happening with that man? They say they are located 26th of this month. 26th of this month. Let me tell you, that man is coming. What will you do with the money? Not yet planned. You have not yet planned? Yes. Okay. Stretch and sports. You are planning a business. Stretch and sports. Mama, you are not alone. God is healing you emotionally. Amen. When I look at your life, I just, I just see God. Amen. Amen. Uh, my name is Mari. 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 Show what you know about your business. Show my, show my, show my. Hallelujah. We all believe in show my. I call show my. What are you doing after? I don't know. What are you? Oh, so I'm going to teach you my dance. I'm going to teach you my dance. Oh, maga o tsa 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 What I'm seeing is just making me smile. Mama, I want to ask you a question. Don't put some things, right? Don't be dressed and poor feet. Why are we there? I'm going to say my name is here. 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 Yeah, I'm going to say my name is here. 
if I say it? No. I should. Yes. So, so as friends, you gossip sometimes. Yes, me too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is about to do something special in your life. I'm, I'm seeing God answering the prayers of your great aunties through you. Your white wedding is coming. Because it's his time. This is about to go to the next level. 
I'm seeing people in Singapore. I'm seeing people in Dubai. I'm seeing people in China that will try to connect to him. Listen to me. That will try, that will try to connect to him for one reason. Because they want, they are trying to establish a shop here in, in, in Blawayo, but they don't have connections. But I want to pray because last year, last year, and the year before, your husband was trying to get into business of doing parts. I saw, am I talking to you? Speak louder. Yes. I saw him trying to join a venture, a business partner together with somebody. Yes. And it did not work out. Yes. Because his side was that he didn't have money. Yes. But that guy had money. Yes. So that business is just died on the way. Yes. It's simple because you were not excited about it. You, because you knew that if he gets money, the next thing what he's doing will be worse. I want to ask you a question. Do you want him to prosper? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you want us to deal with this weakness? Are you tired of it? I'm very tired of it. I don't want to go into details because my, my job is to help people, not to expose. Yes. It's not you, it's his relatives. I will reveal to you now. <laughs> it's not you, say it's not you. It's not me, men of God. It's true. I cannot stand for someone for 10 years. He was in prison. And then he came out in 2016, 2017. He started to be sick. Then they accused me to kill someone. Shabala kada bronta aski bagi kada bronjas. Bala bara kila sombre. Mama, the Lord is remembered all of your children from today. You will not cry anymore. You will not cry anymore. Lift up your hands and let us worship Jesus. 
Let's watch it, Jesus. Just tell him how great he is, is that how great that one had the first in the house. Wash him in. Wash him in. You're crying. You're touched by his story. I see people crying. It's not easy. You go to the prison, you go to see your husband for the 10 years you're waiting, faithfully. When he comes out, he lives with you just for a few months. Then he dies. And then they say it's here that he killed him. Where well, they know what they've done. God is about to remember you over a prayer that you made. But the prayer that you made, you made it in a place called Machuani. Mm -hmm. What is there? My name is Mpopoma. What is my job? It's in Popoma. The church is in Popoma. But I see you making a prayer. But this prayer didn't make it to the church. You were actually walking towards church. And you made a prayer. And the prayer that you made, you say, Go up. Shabbat like I do, Graham. The prayer that you made is say, Lord, from today, may my children be different. And God is answering your prayer now. Now, please listen to me. If you are not a prophet, you will not understand certain things that a prophet does. I can maybe come to a person and say to her, coins. To everyone here it might not make sense, but to her it will make sense. Why? Because God speaks to us based on our experiences and on what on things that we encounter every day. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Your husband will not be arrested. Come here. You are shocked. Why are you shocked? I'm seeing a case. <laughs> <laughs> That's not this you are saying. <laughs> while I was still in prayer and in fasting. Kindly come with a towel, any towel, 
just by a towel. We see this principle in the book of Acts, where the Bible says, those that were being prayed for, coming from Paul, they would heal the sick. So come with your personal towel, okay? Once we are praying and we are doing that, you know the need that you have. And that tower will work for you for exactly 90 days. Miracles will begin to happen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So make sure on Friday you bring what? So just buy a towel. If you don't have money to buy a towel, maybe you can get the one that you have already. Just bring it. Praise the Lord. Before maybe I come, I, I ask Mama, and you just put it here on the altar. We'll be praying for those towels. After the service, pick them up. Sick people will be healed. Their deaf's ears will be opened. Financial testimonies. People will be sleeping very well in their houses. Praise the Lord. Mama, your children will not die. They are protected. They are covered. Are you hearing me? So Friday, whether you have a business issue or just buy that towel. For 90 days, you'll be amazed the acceleration that God will give to you. Some of you will be engaged, marriages will be restored, financial breakthroughs, even your prayer life will go to the next level. 